Hello, everyone. Welcome to Texas Tea. How's it going? A little hyper today. At least one of us is a little hyper today. I'm trying to fix this so you can see me. Because the people are like, I can't see your eyes. Now you can see my eyes, okay? See? <laughs> anyway, I hope you're having a fabulous week. And you are hanging in there in the midst of coronation. Because we know how this goes, right? It feels like a never-ending vacation. I just would like to be in a place like Mykonos, Greece, or Hawaii, or Isla de Mujeres, you know, anywhere, Cabo, I don't know, whatever, Isa, go somewhere fun. I think we need to plan our next pandemic better, to be honest with you. So if we're going to be out for like 12 months, we can just, you know, go on vacation for 12 months, right? Why not? So I was joking with a friend of mine, I said, why in the world did we pandemic where we pandemic? <laughs> anyway, I'm just being silly, kind of in one of those weeks today. So I hope everything is fabulous for you. Today we are doing Hope in Your Hands, right? And that's what we're going to focus on, our therapeutic art uh, and where you actually find hope in your life. And it's kind of a comparison contrast between the past and the future and what kind of future you want to create um, for yourself moving forward. So that's kind of what we're going to bend um today too and see how you were doing uh next week we actually might have a special guest today i went and voted. Woo! i hope everyone is rocking their votes that actually was a very speedy process perfect um it was a very speedy process i was in and out in like probably 30 minutes so i cannot complain now, went, did you actually walk inside a building or did you go drive through no i actually walked inside you can drive through that? Yeah, there's some places. That, you can drive through. They're doing a drive through kind of thing for uh, in some of these places. No, I didn't I drive through. I, I actually um, walked in. Okay. At, but, you know, before you walk I like, in. I like walk-ins. Before you walk in, you actually get to see everybody. Let me push this back. So. Um, before you walk in, you get, you know, finagled by everyone who wants you to vote for, who they want you to vote finagled? for. Finagled? Yes, you know, they're like, hey, vote for my candidate. Or, oh, yeah, right. Or, they have all the little signs out. Yeah. Oh, God, it's like an ocean of signs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was really interesting, though, because I got, you know, blasted by the Trump people and the Democratic people. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. They were did all you, out, though. Did you get blasted by the Libertarians? No, but I was really surprised on the ballot to see how many Libertarian candidates there were. There were a yeah. lot of Democratic candidates that were unopposed, so there was mm. no one else even running against them, which was really interesting. That's when you put your right hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was funny, and it was funny because one of uh, Sarah Davis's people there, and I was like, I haven't seen Sarah in like years, and they go, "What?" And I said, "The last time I was in the Senate, yeah. I was, and I can't remember it was Senator Green or Senator Coleman, one of their offices." has like a secret window in it. And it's the only office with the patio in the Capitol in Texas. And uh, it's Sandra Coleman, I think, actually. <laughs> but <laughs> it has a secret patio and people that know them, they'll let them out and you can sit on the patio and drink your tea or whatever. And he was like, oh, go check it out. Cause I was giving him a signed poster. I was signing a poster for him to put in his office. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. I went out on the roof and Sarah Davis was like, Back there, her little legs were kicked up. <laughs> I was like, hey, Sarah. And she's that like, sounds, oh. It sounds like Texas politics. Yeah, it was so funny. Well, you know, she wasn't on the floor at the time of her break, but it was really funny because I startled her. <laughs> They're like, go ahead. You can go back to your nap. Okay. What are you doing here? Uh, private side, yeah. yeah, it was just fun. It's funny how they all know. They're all friends. Yeah. yeah. They're pretty much all friends, yeah. I'm sure. There's, I'm sure there's a few of them that don't get along, but it's really interesting just to go to the Capitol. And, yeah. And like poke that. around. Yeah. So what have right. you been up to? What's your week like? Have you voted yet? I have not. But I will be voting before it gets real busy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Early voting until October 31st. But I understand it's a huge turnout. You know, back there predicting this is going to be the biggest turnout. Yeah. And I hope so. I have some friends, you know, that'll go vote. And I have some other friends that are like, I'm not going to vote because I don't like either candidate. I was like, well, there's like four presidential candidates on the ballot. And this is just the <laughs> president. There's a bunch of other things. Other you're things for. you're voting for. Is Senate. Judges, Senate, congressman, district attorney. Congressman. Yeah, it was interesting. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. I met, so we might have a special guest next week after you oh, talk. Okay. Yeah. And it's it's a, a judge who's running oh. for office. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, it's only I'm going to start inviting people from different okay. groups just to 
stitch out. Get a different point of view. Yeah. Do you think grilling? Yeah, you grilling is all right. right. Great. I love grilling. Uh, now, if it were time to it was fun. It was fun, like talking to him. He was he was saying he was a, a city judge, so he processes like not anywhere between five hundred and nine hundred cases a night. I know, I know what they're doing. I just unbelievable. That's a lot of volume of cases. But he's saying, you know, a lot of people oh, they get in trouble on the weekend. And, I know. <laughs> you know I know they have days. to sit, they'll sell out out of court. He said, yeah. if it weren't for that process, selling out of court does not work. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting talking to him. So I invited him and he knows your tea shop because he's been here. He oh. said he came here when it first opened and with Thea. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so this should be should be interesting. I always meet judges though, all the time. I don't know yeah. what it is. Oh, uh, okay. You probably did you, have you, had run, have you had run it with the law? No. No, but I'm in that court case against the drug impaired driver, oh, so okay. Okay. I think I just draw the judges. I have Some quite a few judges. Draw in the law. Yeah. At least I'm on the right side. Yeah. That's good. That's <laughs> He's going to draw it on the other <laughs> side, right? So today's thing that we're doing is hope in your hands. It's our therapeutic art. But first, you're going to let Chris talk about his tea today. What's the okay. tea of the day? The tea of the day is an oolong. And I chose this one. This is called ruby oolong. Mm. See what you think. Yeah. It's an oolong. I find the more you drink it, the more you like it. It's kind of like the idea of hope, right? You know, mm. The more you start to get into hope, you know, it tends to kind of grow. You can become more hopeful. You know, we could talk about that for hours probably. But anyway. It's good. Yeah. It's kind of very refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. It's unflavored. But the oolongs are very good. Yeah, it's got a little flavor, flavor to it. Well, it has a flavor, but not an added flavor. No. It's good though. We didn't put any rum in it or anything like that. No rum, no vodka. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, so the oolongs are very good for your liver. You know, so you, it's a known fact by some people that if your livers are doing better, you're going to be doing better. Mm -hmm. I like the Chinese. They have an old saying that says, as your liver goes, so does your life. Good, strong liver, good, strong life, healthy. Not a good liver. Not. So anyway, so you really want to support your liver. Okay? I want to support it. You're not supposed exactly. to eat fatty foods in that either. That, we, that gives your, if you eat high carbs, then you can have high fat for dinner. But if you eat protein, you can't have high fat. I don't know about all that. But like avocados have, and stuff. I like avocados. You're not supposed to have them at night before you go to sleep if you eat meat. Okay. Only right. if you don't eat meat can you Of have course, them. it depends on your body. No, yeah. Diet, that's all that. You know, people mm -hmm. want a different way to do that. Like my wife, she was an oat type, so red meat really worked for her tremendously. Mm -hmm. But for me, red mm -hmm. meat is just not going to happen. This is, doesn't work for my body. I was a vegetarian for five years, mm -hmm. maybe six. I mean, I need. And now I eat hamburgers. So. Uh, yeah. Chicken burgers. But you're probably an O type, right? I'm O. I'm O negative. Okay. Actually. Yeah. It seems that the O types, if uh, right, uh, the O types work well. Yeah, I think because we need higher levels of iron. Well, I told you about the last time I took my blood test. I was like 1.2 low. They told me to come back in a month, which had never happened in the history of me donating for the last 20 years. Oh. Yeah, so I was like one point because I, I went vegetarian for <laughs> Oh yeah, well, <laughs> so my protein really... wasn't high enough. Yeah. But, you know, I cycle on, cycle off. Some days I eat, some, some days I don't eat any meat. It yeah. just depends. Yeah. Mood. I know that I was vegetarian for about six years, my younger years. And the big problem was there are certain things were a problem. And now I understand that the B complex. B or D? B, as in boy, Billy, you know. So I understand that's a big problem. So if you're a vegetarian, you have to really pay attention to hmm. that getting up. So meat, you can really get a lot of B complex in there at a concentrated way. But if you're not, a lot of people who are vegetarian are not getting up B. What about hangritarian? What? <laughs> I know some hangritarians, people that. What is that? It's like being hangry. Like they oh, haven't eaten and so they're like grumpy. Oh, yeah. I know people I, like that. Like, they don't eat. Oh, my gosh. Like, who are you? Exactly. <laughs> Someone just took over their body. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a whole other personality. I like, know. Ooh, I'm going you away know, now. What I have learned with women. <laughs> you know, oh, like, now it's yeah, women. Women in the shop or in the shop. And we have, you know, me, a guy. We have Chris, other guy. And we can not go for food, 
with food. We get hungry. We don't have to go with food because we're not going to like become really, you know, <laughs> weird. But if a woman, I've noticed, if they say, I need to eat, you better feed them right now because the blood sugar, you know, and all of a sudden, you yeah. get that thing of, yeah, another Home personality. Another personality. Another personality shows up. I'm hungry. So <laughs> I knew it was true to my wife. Really? When she's starting to get a low blood sugar, she's getting hungry. She ain't eating. Or I think guys, they can get away with it. Oh, yeah, you can go because you don't have the dips in the iron. Maybe is what it is. I think it's other things, too. I think it has to do with hormones. I don't know, but the way we digest food. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about, well, maybe that worked well for our ancestors. The guys go out and hunt. Maybe they have to, you know, go hunt for a couple of days before they can get any food. Yeah, so you you would have to, yeah. But women, you know, I think they're more like, you know, typically they had their own kids, had a family, whatever, they have to come together. I don't think Mm -hmm. it was that big, big an issue as it was for men. In order for things to work. Yeah. But I do. I think women have the dips in the iron and the dips in the blood sugar. And you definitely see it in the personality. Yeah. It's like they have to be well fed, watered, well slept, and well loved. Well loved. It's It's important. It's important. So, anyway. Yeah. So, tell me about things that bring you hope. Okay. What do you find hope in? Uh, Having an overall view of what's happening. In mm-hmm. the world with, with our, and I find if you get caught up in the news, you get caught up in all these details, all this stuff flying at you, it can be pretty depressing, anxiety producing, fear producing. I mean, it's just, you know, there's so much that going on in the world. So I find for myself, it's really good to pull back some and just take a deeper view, mm-hmm. or maybe become more in touch with the pain. You know, it's, I find that works. Take a break. So it's a, uh, it's like just kind of moving back a little bit, stepping back a little bit, maybe more of an internal, just mm-hmm. connecting internally, or like some people be meditating, whatever it is, to kind of be able to pull back and just have maybe a broader view of what's going on now. I'm so upset, you know, mm-hmm. because anyway, so I find hope comes in those kinds of way. So for me, guys. Oh, we're going to be soundproof. Okay. <laughs> I really can hear him better now. Yeah. So I find uh, little things. Like it could be something as simple as, you know, having an attitude. Just, well, what am I grateful for today? Mm-hmm. And start shifting and changing uh, how I'm feeling. If I get caught up in the fear factors and you know, all the stuff, you can, oh, my God, this can happen. That can happen. We're going to die. You know, you get really upset. Yeah. I get really, really, I have people coming to tea shop. And I've had a couple of ladies I know quite well, very intelligent very together women and they said we might you know, stop watching all this damn news so we were just, I was just freaked out <laughs> just losing it I'm well it's very fear based a lot of the news oh god you listen to it 24-7 and mm-hmm. we we'll just bring you right down so you know anything we can do to kind of disengage from all that you know yeah I think that being in action is important for me I do daily devotionals in the, in, in the morning so whether you have a secular devotional or just something that can kind of plug you in to something, even as a creative person, you know, it helps to have a focus for that day. Yeah. They have spiritual daily devotionals. They have secular ones. They have ones for kids. They have all kinds of really cool stuff okay. that you could print out. There's a, a company called the Happiness Planner. They've got a really cool just themed calendar that you can just kind of write and journal on. Sometimes journaling helps. Yeah. I usually sketch out my dreams. Like I was showing you last time, I have a dream book. Mm-hmm. Um, so that helps me and then just scheduling my meditation time in like three times a week I don't really do it every day but I do it like every other day right? you know or I might do it when I go to bed at night those kind of things make me stay hopeful because the news you're right the news is very very fear based and especially around this election there's a lot of fear you know fear mongering going all over the place and I think some of the best ways to combat that are to be in action to be in action in your community get out and like volunteer and try to do something positive, you know, go work in your garden, go do something you would normally do, go play basketball. Yeah, go help yeah. something. Go help a friend, go help a family member, mm-hmm. just anything where you can start doing something that's more positive. You pull yeah. yourself out of this. Because the truth is, you can't have all these people being right about what's going to happen because there's a lot of comfort information. So, you know, not all of this, if any of it. So, it's good to unplug from that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really is. Well, my grandfather had his 87th birthday Sunday, so that was kind of cool. I had to call him and stuff, but I didn't get to see him because I had to work. Mm-hmm. I'm working on Sunday, but we'll make up for it this week. 
Oh, okay. this time. Yeah. But on the good news scale, speaking of being in action, I have an art piece up for auction at the Children's Museum. Uh, it is a golden duck. The auction went live uh, last week, but the promotion started Monday. So yeah. it's really, literally, he's a, he's a duck. Yeah. And he's he comes quack. with, <laughs> he's a quack. And he comes, um, quack, right? yes, with two, uh, with the spa package for two people at the float spa, at the sensory deprivation spa. Um, so you can experience that if you've never done it before. It's very peaceful. But he is inlaid with, uh, or she is inlaid with 23 karat gold oh. from Minetti, Italy, which is the oldest gold manufacturer in the world. Really? Mm -hmm. That's the gold leaf that's on it. So um, if you want to place your bid, it's number 820 at the Houston Children's Museum of Houston. It's uh, a marvelous night game. Okay the 24th of October. So you can jump online. I'll put the link down later at the bottom. I also have the link to Chris's teach off if you want to check that out. And I put a weekly meditation on every single uh, tea episode that we do. So that way you can have something to focus on for that week if you'd like. Well, also on the 24th of October, unfortunately, we have a collision here because we have Harry's Gone Bowl show here at the shop. Oh, We're doing fun. outside. And so it's going to be a great Time to get in here, all these drawing, all these meditative kind of sounds going on. Uh, Did you say he ran into me? We ran into each other last week. Yeah. Yeah, at Movable Feast. Oh, yes. I was right. meeting my client. That's right. And so we ran into each other. If y'all have never been to Movable Feast, it's this really cool yeah. holistic grocery store. So they carry all of the stuff that you don't usually find in mainstream, like ear candles and herbs and this dragon blend protein shake, which is pretty freaking amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing. So... A cool little place, it's been around forever. Yeah, I know. It's a little mom and pop shop. Yeah, originally it started off here in good. the Munchers area. Mm. Yeah. See, I remember them here, and now they're a little further out. But we drive down there to meet my clients that are kind of out in Timbuktu. Yeah, they've been around forever. Mm -hmm. Forever meaning like you know, mid 70s. Yeah, this is only like 45 years ago. Um, I was back then. <laughs> were born yet, right? I don't think my parents lived in Houston at the time. We didn't come to Houston until I was like five. Okay. But so, just so y'all know, um, and next week Chris is going to dress up for you because it's Halloween week. I am? <laughs> oh, let me guess. The bunny outfit. I told him they want to make you a Playboy bunny. <laughs> Playboy bunny. <laughs> That'll be good. Scare It'll everybody. Be fun. Okay. Okay, so today we're going to do Hope in Your Hands. Are y'all ready? I'm ready. Oh. Open your hands. So we're going to do it. So this is an easier exercise. It's one of the ones you can do with your children as well, if you would like to do it with the, a kid in your family or someone in your family. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Chris turn around. You know, I like making him my guinea pig. Yep. He's such a good sport about it. If you ever want to come be a guest on Texas Tea, just send me a message. Yeah, let's know. Chris doesn't mind a mini vacation from his drawing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I can't smell his draw. Maybe an artist. So... Yeah. On this one, you're going to put your left, you're going to make space for your left and your right hand. You're going to put your left hand on the piece of paper first. So get your paper and your pen and anything that you need. Okay. My cute little Texans hat. Give props to the Texans for okay, so the little gift they sent me. You're going to outline it? Yeah, so you're going to put your left hand, you're going to outline your left hand in whatever color you want. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, how good Chris is with his, his, his kindergarten hand trees. Yeah, I learned a lot. Man. Perfect. Right. Now I'll do your right hand. Okay. And now you're gonna you're gonna trace both hands, your left and your right hand. Nice. So while he was drawing his right hand, I'm gonna tell you something a little bit about holistic medicine. People in massage school know this. People that do biofield energy therapy your reiki know this or chronic medicine your left hand is the hand that absorbs energy um for people that are hired to do uh intuitive readings at criminal or crime scenes they're only allowed to touch whatever is at the crime scene with their left hand the reason for this is the left hand picks up the impression of objects so if i grab this coffee cup and someone held that coffee cup before me or it's a piece of jewelry or whatever, you can get information from this one. 
the right hand is what imprints energy on something. So I find it interesting that we shake hands with the right hand, right? Um, and so the reason they're not allowed to touch stuff at a crime scene with their right hand is if they touch it with their right hand, it imprints on that object and it changes the energy of, the energy of it. And so they can no longer read whatever is happening in it. So that's kind of an interesting go-to. So what we're going to do on the left hand is the left hand represents the past. And we're going to draw the things that maybe have dimmed our light a little bit, that maybe we felt challenged by, that uh, were a little bit difficult. You can draw it like you can think of the four seasons. You can draw like the four elements, earth, wind, water, fire. The seasons are winter, summer, spring, and fall. So you can describe your journey on your left hand of some of the things that you have felt challenging of those things. So you either use the four elements or the four seasons or a combination of both. But you can only use those? But you can only use those. Oh, yeah, I gotta think about that. So it's the four seasons? The four seasons. The five elements? Or the, or the four elements. Four. Okay, is that the four elements? So air, water, wind, fire. Uh, or you can do winter, spring, fall, summer. Ah, interesting, huh? So that's how you draw. So you do each finger as a representation of things that you've gone through. Oh, so we draw this on the finger? So you draw it into the fingers. So you pick the five things that you found challenging through coronation or just in this year of 2020. Or just in this year. Just in this year. But, or if you want, you can go back. If 2020 wasn't enough well, for I you. I was my being back when I was a kid. You can go back. You, I mean, you can go back as far as you want. I'm not, there's no right or wrong answer to it. Um, but you think about the things you found challenging that you've tried to overcome, and that's what we put in our left hands. So how do I draw, if I'm doing the four... However you want to draw it. You can draw it. You can draw the colors of the summer. You can put the word. You can put a word. You know how sometimes we make lists. You can put a word that describes the five challenges. That would be easier to start with. You can put a word in each finger describing things that you found challenging in 2020 or maybe before that. There could be other things that you've been working on. Maybe you've been working on your relationships or your business or your finances or a friendship. Or maybe it's one of your relationships forgiving your parents. Um healing, yeah. healing your body. You know, there's different challenges that people go through. Um, and so that's what we're going to write. We're just going to pick a word and write it into your finger. Write it into your finger. I think it's fun to also like paint a word. So like if you have a, a word, like if I tell you paint the word, Fear. You just paint it. What does it look like to you? And this, you're doing a very small scale version of that. You're just isolating. So a lot of these little projects I'm having you do are like stepping stones to bigger projects. This is how you get out of the creative funk if you've been in one. Whether that be through writing where you feel stuck, you start with a word. If you are stuck in your painting, if you're stuck in you know, coming up with new concepts for something that you want to design. That's what we do. We start with a word. <laughs> Chris, his middle, his middle finger is my favorite, right? Um, but, like, these are the things that we do to kind of launch our rocket, our creative rocket, so we can take off. Because a lot of times people get stuck, you know, they'll, they'll really get, you know, writer's block or they just can't, you know, find the next thing to go because they're so overwhelmed by the news. Yeah. And this is a way for you to kind of purge some of that out of your system and get really clear about, okay, these are the five things that I've been dealing with that I found challenging, you know, in this past year or, you know, the year before, however you want to do it. Um, yeah. So back to the hands, about energy. So what was found out scientifically was that if a bunny is running through the forest, Right, bunny is running through the forest. You would think that if an eagle flies over the bunny to eat it, that bunny would be able to sense that um, that eagle is coming, right? Yeah. Or that, but but scientists for a long time thought that that bunny could actually see the eagle. So when the shadow came over, the bunny knew he had to freeze or go into a hole or do whatever. Um, but actually, what they found out is that rabbits cannot turn their heads. They're not. They can't turn their heads like we can turn our heads. And so they can't run and be like, 
you know, <laughs> they can't turn their head the same way. And so what they found out when they did an autopsy on a rabbit is the skin cells on the back of their neck are, are uh, photo cells, like photosensitive. So they can pick up light subtleties and light changes. And so humans only have that on their left hand. Oh, right. mm -hmm. so part of your being able to pick up and you can you can play with cards like a deck of cards you can just play with the colors like take a normal deck of cards and lay them out you can do this with your kids you find out how sensitive you are close your eyes and go through each deck and guess what color it is with your left hand just guess do the whole deck you see how many get right how many get wrong some people can get the whole deck other people can distinguish the colors that's because those Light receptor cells on the left hand can distinguish color. That's right in your palm. Mm -hmm. So as you hover over it, you can also do it with color swatches at the Home Depot. Go get the color swatches and cut them up. And then hover your hands. Every color has a different light range. And you can pick that up through practice. You can train yourself to make the distinction of the different types of colors. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting, huh? Science is fascinating. All right. Okay, so All now right. you draw into, now that you've got the little words, he's got words in each of his fingers, I'll show you. I can see. He's got words in each of his fingers. You can actually draw pictures in the, your fingers using the elements. So you use winter, spring, summer, or fall, fire, water, earth, or air, or a collection of each one. And you draw the word? Yeah. However you want to do it. We ball that still the finger. Mm -hmm. You draw the finger. They can do each finger, different element, different season, depending on where you've come or what you found the most challenging. Funny, the days that I swim, I feel like I can never drink enough water. I went swimming well late today. You're a fish. I am a fish. So this part mermaid. Anyway, but um, the days that I swim, I always want to drink like 20. Okay, so I'm exaggerating, but you know, somewhere in there, I want to drink well, a lot of water. You guys tell me when you're doing water and tea. The white macadamia nut cookies, are those also charged negatively? No. Those are the uh, Jubilee. Thank you. We were talking about cookies. See how it is? Cookies. I just don't love a good cookie. I'm going to bring some cookies. Let, let Chris taste test. So remember, every finger is a different season or is a different element. Fire, water, earth. I think a minute. What was the fourth one? The other one is um, uh, seasons. Ready? Summer, winter, spring, fall. The holidays are coming. I've been singing Christmas music in my mind for like the last week. Christmas already? In my mind. Isn't it a little early if you sing that in your mind? You know, they already have the Halloween decor. They already have the Christmas decorations up for Halloween, which I think is great. Well. That's so bizarre. I was used to remember, you know, we do Thanksgiving dinner and that's the night and then the mm -hmm. evening that we decorate for the holidays. Hanukkah, whatever. Uh, whatever you want to do. But that we, it was always after Thanksgiving dinner, so it's kind of strange to see how the decorations out before Halloween. Or when they have the holiday party before Halloween, I, I'm like, okay, that's I'm sorry, China America, we got to get that straightened out because that's just not American. It's, it's got <laughs> Right? That's like morphing Chinese New Year, you know? <laughs> we, we don't do that. You know, we gotta get that straightened out because you don't have the holiday parties. Sorry. It doesn't work that way. Although Christmas is in July, it seems to Now that you can get away with. Like, no, I'm sorry. It's weird too, huh? We live in New Zealand. The, the, the seasons are just the opposite. Uh, so they would be celebrating Christmas. Oh, that's and right. It was basically summertime. So you go down to the mm -hmm. beach, you have a barbecue, you go swimming. That'd be fun. It's not Christmas. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, some people can't help it. You know, they can't go where it's cold. And having Easter all what? Well, Russia should just open itself up so we can all fly to Russia for Christmas. 
Uh, yeah, a Russian Christmas. Russian. Russian Hanukkah. Russian Monza. We could just have like a whole month celebration. It's holidays. That sounds like a plan. I think. Okay, so December, when there's no coronation, we should all be on. Yeah. Oh, what? We each get a week <laughs> of celebration. <laughs> oh, we've been doing that. So Chris is over here drawing rings around his fingers. Okay, now that you've done the left hand. Yeah. We're going to do the right hand for oh, those of yeah. you that are ready. So on the right hand, what we're doing is the future. Future. The left hand represents the past. The right hand represents the future. And we are going to draw into each finger what we are hopeful for, right? We have an election coming up. You get to rock your vote and tell the world what it is that you want to see improve upon in your leadership. You even get to choose your leaders, hopefully. Yeah. So I hope you get out there and you vote. I did today. I think if you're marching, you should be voting. And if you're not voting, you shouldn't be marching. <laughs> I know that sounds brutal, but it's true. You should be voting. You should march right down and rock your vote. So in your right hand, you're going to be doing just the opposite. You're going to be writing things that you're hopeful for. So you're going in every finger going to write something that you hope for in the future. So now we're kind of shifting our perspective a little bit to things that have been difficult and challenging to something that has brought us hope and inspiration. This is indeed thought of here. So remember, you get to use the seasons or the elements, winter, spring, summer, fall, or you get to use fire, water, earth, or air. It's whatever that looks like to you. There's no right or wrong way. Life is always full of endless possibility. You never know what can happen when you have faith. When you think it's hard, you just ask your ask divinity, ask your divine power to help you out. I need help down here. Hello. <laughs> That's what we have all those angels, ancestors, and guides for. Right? Because so everyone has a sole purpose and everyone has a future. You know? I want you to be hopeful about what's going on in the world. I know sometimes it seems a little grim and dark if you watch too much news, but the truth is, is that all we have is today and all we have is this moment. So make the most of your moments, make the most with your family and your friends and try to find a little bit of joy in your day every day. Whether that's through using a daily devotional, whether that is through getting um, on a conference call and maybe part of a group, that like a prayer group or like a group that does weekly meditations or a group that is yoga or a group that does Tai Chi. It's also great for energy flow. If you can't really do a lot of exercising, there's a lot of great stuff for sit and be fit. If you're injured and you can't get out of bed, maybe you're you know, a little mopey because you can't move around like you normally do, but it doesn't mean that you can't move your mind. Right. So what I want is for everyone just to kind of hang in there. I know, or at that point, we're all just kind of waiting it out, trying to see what tomorrow brings, you know? You never know. Never know. We can always hope for the best, right? He has his words in there, now he needs to draw. Oh, That's the point of being an artist. You're supposed to get stuff all over your hands. Yeah, draw what? Oh, you same. draw into yeah, the same with the different elements. Uh, I got different elements. <laughs> all right. If you're looking for an even bigger challenge with um, therapeutic art, I did a class for girls night in online and it's free it's attached to my twitter and my facebook and my linkedin profiles you can actually replay it and that will go through an exercise called wabi sabi 
And that is much more challenging than this one. It's an entire hour long course. Uh, and so I hope you enjoy it. It's about simplicity. Uh, so it's kind of a different process, but just makes you think, makes you get out of your head. And sometimes that's what we need to do is get out of our head, go play a game, do a puzzle, read a book, you know, spend time with the people we care about, even if it's just a one-on-one -on -one dinner. Can't stop living, we have to keep moving. Ceremonial Lodge by the Sprite, correct? Before, yeah, I think, yeah, by then. Get it? Deep thought. Deep. I think about voting was interesting. So today when I was out at the voting poll, there was a gentleman out there. He was like, our ancestors came so far out for us to be able to be here. And I said, yeah, one of the best films you can ever watch about voting is um, Free State of Jones. It's with Matthew McConaughey. If you've never seen it, you have to check it out. It's really powerful. And I said, it's one of the questions I've always asked. And I used to, you know, sit down and talk with my grandmother about when she was alive. And I've talked to my grandfather about it a few times. Um, is can you rebrand racism is it possible or is it the same agenda just with a new name and that was my question and it's fascinating to me because i think as a citizen you know we have a responsibility even if we don't care for all of the candidates we have a responsibility to get out and to really like you know rock our vote and put our two cents in there so that we can help change so we can help you know progress our nation and our country and, you know, put forth whatever it is that we believe that our country should represent. And so I'm hoping, I know Chris will go on next week. I'm hoping many of you will get out and vote. Yeah. Please vote. I'll be voting. It's so important. My friends that are telling me they're not voting, I'm going to like pressure them into voting. What kind of talking about they would mean? Because if you don't vote, that means you're giving somebody else your Mm -hmm. And do you want to be powerless people to do anything? I just tell them if they don't vote, they can't complain to me because I don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, if you don't vote, you cannot complain. No complaining. Mm -mm. If you vote, then you can complain to me and I'll listen. But if you don't vote, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> and they're like, oh. I'm like, well. You're opting out. Yeah. I'm like, you opted out. I'm opting in. Mm -hmm. It's easy to complain. It's harder to be in action about something. Yeah. As you look at the numbers, they're thinking this could be a record half this year. Oh, I hope so. For this election. I think we'll have, I wonder if we'll have more people than we did with Obama. Because I remember being at the center when they brought in the numbers for Obama's thing. I mean, you were at a party. Oh, party animals. But I think they're saying that, which means a lot of people are feeling like they need to get involved. In the country. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that totally. Yeah, the other thing I find is interesting is like how people pressure you based on their party. So like, oh yeah, my yeah. cousin love her to death. <laughs> she, she's so funny. She's like, you know that I vote Republican. I was like, yes, I kind of figured that out. It's like our family's like split and all these like you know you got your Democratic family, your Republican family, my Libertarians, <laughs> and little Green Party. You know, yeah, it's so funny. She's just like, <laughs> you know, that's how we vote. I said, well, good for you. You know. <laughs> Like, we, the other whatever thing. it is that you're going to believe, I believe in freedom of choice. Yeah. As an artist, it's all about freedom of expression and freedom of choice. You yeah. have that right, and I respect that right, even if I don't agree with you. Right. And for Americans, we become so polarized. I mean, I know people say, oh, my God, I have people who have cut me off, you know, we thought be defriending, whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, because I'm for a particular candidate. And good friends kind of like cut each other off. So I can't believe they're going to end the relationship. So you got to be kidding me. You just got to listen to people. I mean, that's the thing. I have people that are in my life that are very different than me and that are similar to me. And it's kind of like, that's cool. You know, I appreciate your two cents because I have friends that are fiscally conservative, but not um, in other ways. They're not conservative in other ways, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, or they're the opposite. You know, they're not fiscally conservative and they're the other way. And I have some friends that just love the planet. 
yeah. you know, so it's whatever you decide. I respect that. The tree huggers. Yeah. Yeah. So, you but know, I was saying, you know, if we're going to get this concept that we the people, but we're not all the same. We and the people so in many if opinions. We're, if we're going to be we the people instead of we the few, we're going to have to start learning how to work with one another. Yeah. Which means accepting each other's our differences and realizing, you know, it really could end up being our strengths. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, anyway, there's a long, you can talk about that for hours. Anyway. So we're going to look at Chris's hands. So this is his. Was well, actually a drawing left of my hand. hands. I'm right, right. <laughs> well, it's a drawing of Chris's hands. There you go. Well, come on, Chris. I thought it was your hands. Wow. <laughs> Basically, my, my mom keeps talking about some Halloween movie where all the creatures, the Halloween decorations come to life. She's so freaked out about it. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, what movie is it? She's like, I don't know, but it's creepy. <laughs> but amazing. Are these Chris's hands or his hands? Yes. Okay. Hands. So this is what it looks like. <laughs> now, everybody does it different. Some people will actually color the whole thing. Feel free to color the whole hand. You know, Chris does like, simplified versions of art but it still works i only had so much time yeah you know i'm so stringent on his timelines and he just freaks out and yeah. you know it's like okay so tell us about your left my well, left hand's a blue hand and so yeah I <laughs> oh he went republican and democrat blue and red subconsciously it's oh my god oh my god <laughs> so anyway well the idea i knew about in one way i think of the left hand i think it was also what they call receptive side of your body, right? The feminine mm -hmm. side. Of course, the left hand is feminine. Right. Yeah. I don't say just woman, but feminine, right? So the receptive side of the at all. So that's why I was putting that in blue. I think that in terms of, you know, blue could be coming in more with the feeling of water, mm -hmm. emotions, feelings. I, that's kind of See, yeah. related. And this is what he has written. Fear, health, social distance, News. What's the what's your thumb say? Corruption. Ooh, corruption. That's a big one. Yeah, yeah. So that would be things that he's found challenging either in the last year or you can go way back. Whatever yeah. you felt challenging that you've been working on. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, the news is obviously more recent. I find that challenging. But anyway, the lack of well truth being all over the place, you know. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of there's that old saying that the first casualty in war is the truth. And the thing that bothers me, challenging for me, is all this polarization going on, and the truth is just gone. I mean, people just throw it out the window. So I find that challenging. Like, can we get down to something being truthful for once? Anyway. So. Oh, yeah. I posted the doctors. There's a woman on Instagram named Allie Zek, and okay. she is very anti-vaccine. And so she posts some really interesting like information on her Instagram. It's fascinating. Yeah. But she posted this one picture of all these people chained to their desks and it was like, eat, sleep, work. It, uh, and I like took her thing and I posted, um, oh, the doctor's name, I'm not gonna remember at the moment, but I posted a doctor's information on the new vaccines. And it's pretty fascinating. If you get a chance to listen to it, especially if you have children, you're definitely gonna wanna listen to it. Yeah. but. You know, it was one of those things, you know, there's opinion, but then there's the fact of it. And she's talking about the nano, the nano chips that are actually in the vaccines that activate to 5G. It's really fascinating. And it, it takes oxygen out of the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Yeah. So it creates a type of hypoxia is what it does, but. Which is one of the things they found is one of the problems with, uh, with the number of people with the virus. Yeah, and they started that, and, and they noticed it first in China when China first started testing out 5G. So it's really fascinating. Maybe you get a chance to listen to it. She's very knowledgeable. She she talks about vaccines all over the world. She went in front of the UN. She's very well respected. So I got to with it on one of my links. Yeah. So if you send that link to me. Oh yeah, definitely. So this is some of the things that he felt challenged by. The news, social distancing. You know, yeah, we're very far apart right now. That's right. We're just all distant. Out here, I, I the other thing I thought who came up with the word social distance, and at first I thought that's a lousy word to use. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of wondered about that. So we were coming up with different terms. We say, uh, you know, spacing, physical spacing, rather than social distance. Because social distance, you can't help but get around the patients or the the little thoughts that may come along with that. Or we're becoming socially distanced from each other. 
that's not true. That's not what you're trying to do. I've been hugging people all the time. Yeah. I hug people anyway. Hugging Corona. Anyway. I don't even get, you know what's funny is I don't even stay. I feel like when it's your time to go, oh, it's your time to go. I'm you know? famous. And I'm just very honest. Like, I'm honest about it. Because, I mean, you know, you know, I've okay. lost friends and family. But the thing is, is that I love my friends. And I'm not going to stop hugging my friends or when I'm around them just because of whatever, you know, China virus. <laughs> now, I have certain people. And out of respect for them, I don't hug them. Oh, well, yeah. Because, don't want you to hug they are, them. because in their the way they feel about it is like, I'm really at risk here. And so I'm trying to just keep it safe as possible. Well, if you're immune compromised, that makes sense. Well, yeah. I still hug my friends, though. Because yeah, right. you know, whether it's coronavirus out. or something else, <laughs> one day, but yeah, my ticket. I really like the, the my wife was the hugger of all. Mm. So I totally agree with hugging. And I grew up at a time when this is a lot back, and our family, a lot of families, hugging was just 1910. This wasn't done, <laughs> and yeah, 1910 <laughs> and uh, last century, anyway. So, my it was my older brother who actually started hugging in the family. Oh, he was the affectionate one. My dad is the hugger. My dad is like the really affectionate. Yeah. So all of a sudden, the family all started yeah. hugging. And then I think started noticing socially, there was a lot more hugging going on. Mm -hmm. You know? And then my wife, Vic, she had this whole thing about hugging me. Yeah. And so it's just, <laughs> you know, so I, I, I really love hugging that. people. And you know what it is? After looking at Ali's ex post, I just, I completely got what she was saying that, you know, the powers that be want us chained to the computer and not engaged with humanity. And I want to be engaged with humanity. That's what uh, art is. And that's the other thing we used to bring up in the tea shop. All the, time. the whole point of tea is bring people together in a social way. Mm -hmm. Start connecting with one another, all of that. And that's what tea is really all about. It really is conducive for that, but that's really the idea of tea. And so when we start, when things come up and you have all the kids and they're, they're in their little devices, you know, they're not connecting with their little friends and uh, kind of on one way, you know, mm -hmm. they communicate with all the friends through a device. There's a lot more distancing happening. And so that's kind of the antithesis of the idea of tea. So anyway. So now we're going to go to his happy hand, which is this one. Yep. You have to tell him what you have on it. Okay. Oh, well, that's one. This is kind of dealing with, you know, hey, I'm putting out excellent leaders. Like because not only me, but I think most of most Americans believe, you know what, we need to have some decent leaders for a and with the idea, I've heard that term way too much now. The lesser of evils. You know? So <laughs> obviously, people are just not real happy with the people that are stepping up to be leaders. You know, and I think some of the people I've heard people say, "I'm not going to vote because I can't stand it." Anyway, oh, that's that's about. You have on the first one. Moving forward. Yeah, so we stay hopeful. Yeah, moving forward. I just see the change that they're coming. We need to really move forward and becoming really more of the nation we really want to be. Seeing truth? Uh huh. Rather than just everybody's just dispensing with the truth or, you know, just totally getting behind their whatever their group they're identifying with. Blessing. And so a good friend of mine was talking about the. Unity. Yeah, instead of all this polarized, everybody's becoming very shattered. Polarized, very shattered. Hmm. Healed, you know, they're not radical. They're not the extreme left or extreme right. right. Most Americans are very kind of central, which is more of a unity kind of awareness. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that's been mm -hmm. happening is it seems like, oh, all American. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, that was it. Yeah. 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 Well, that was the five fingers. Uh, five, unless you had six. Oh, uh, really? I heard it. <laughs> yeah. We will have an extra too. So if you, if you want to draw toes instead of hands, feel free. There's no wrong way. What if your fingers are webbed? Oh, if you have webbed fingers, I'd like to. My older brother 
and webbing onto fingers between two fingers of both hands. Was he from the and, lost city of Atlantis? Well, my parents called him Duck for a while. Yeah, mm -hmm. had normal fingers. But Mike said, you know, they ruined my chances for the Olympic swimming team. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. It probably seems like it hit you on the team. They had troubles from it. But, you know, Michael Phelps is like you. He's long and skinny. So I think oh, he's already seen, like half the length. Of the but have you seen the body? His body he has an extremely long torso and relatively shorter legs. He's, he's got, got long a, arms, though. He's got a perfect swimming body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, just his so tiny. And she's like one hell of an athlete. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah. just amazing. Just amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I'm trying to stay hopeful. I hope you yeah. guys are having an awesome week. And that you're enjoying Texas tea today. Wanna do a towel? You feeling towel today? Tapsle? Yeah, sure. You want to do a tap? We're going to do a tap today because I have my hat on, so I'm going to have to do like a, okay. a sideway tap. Okay. Emotional freedom technique created by Dr. Dr. Daniel Craig. <laughs> he is actually has two PhDs, and one is in acupressure. And so rather than using acupuncture with little needles for those of you that don't like the needles acupressure helps remove trauma and ptsd from the body is powerful you can use it on any subject there are thousands of free subjects parents forgiveness resentment um, money you name it but any subject you can actually pick the trigger out of, of whatever that subject is okay so we're going to do it on Remaining hopeful. You ready? So we're going to use the side of the hand. For those of you, this is going to look a little strange for those of you that have never done it. But we tap right here on the side point of the hand. Like this, right? Uh, we can do it yeah. under the table okay. All right. when they're talking to you. Well, Even on the cell phone. And it keeps yeah, what it does. Is said, well, I'm just keeping, keeping you off, off my head. I'm keeping it off me. The collarbone, that also works as well. I, I just don't do it when I'm talking to people face to face because it looks kind of odd if I sit there and tap. Just, so, um, um, just tell me if the tick. Right? I'm going to tick. Or you need your panic attack and PTSD. You can do a figure eight. Oh, that's across the, cool. the Across the collarbone, yeah. that actually calms them down. Sounds very strange. Uh, oh, you mean do it yourself and calm them down? Well, how a panic attack. It works really, really well. So you do it right the yeah, I literally do a figure eight, so I'll, I'll stretch my shirt for you. That's so you the kidney point, right? Yeah. yeah, so I just do a figure eight across the collarbones like this. Oh, that's very good enough. That. And it actually is very soothing to someone, or if you have a child that's like, you know, freaking out. Please, you don't hold them. You want to get that grip? You want to get that grip? Like, like when you grab the hand. This is Chris's wrist. So I'm going to grab that grip. I'm like breaking this. out. So he's having a panic attack, and I'm going to grab his wrist. Like, you grab their left wrist with your right hand because you're giving them your energy. Gotcha. I'm calming you down with my energy. So that's what I'm doing. So. Those of you that aren't into out of physical mode. So we're going to start here, even though. Even though? We have. Is there an opinion? Hold on. A hard one. He's got my hat on today. Okay. And then it's above the eyebrow. And? The chin. And the collarbone. Oh. Uh, and we're going to do the hand. And? And then go back to the side. Back to the side. So it goes like this. You ready? Even though. Okay, family and friends. It's doing a lot. 
Not my truth. It's just an opinion. It's just an opinion. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. And so it is to this point. It is to this point. We made a lot of sacrifices. A lot of sacrifices. For us to have. For us to have. The freedom to vote. The freedom to vote. The choice to vote. Choice to vote. As a woman. As a woman. As a man. As a man. As a minority. As a minority. We get to go. We get to go. Give our opinion. Give our opinion. Use our voice. Use our voice. And my vote. Rock my vote. Speak my truth. Speak perfect candidate. Speak the perfect candidate. That represents. That represents. Meeting my needs. What now? Meeting my needs. Oh, meeting my needs. I have different opinions. Respect. <laughs> Even if we don't agree. Even if we don't agree, too. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people so, are feeling that, you know. Get out of here with that. Even if you think they're idiots Even for voting idiots. for whoever they for vote for, for you may not like them. You may not like them. Or you may love expression. Because expression. that's what that's our founding fathers, our founding forefathers, sacrificed, sacrificed their lives for. Their lives for. Right? So we eat. We have freedom of choice. We have freedom of choice. Including freedom of religious choice. Including freedom of religious choice. I like my freedom. My freedom. Take a deep breath. So how tapping works is between this finger and this finger. You press into it like this. Uh -huh. And you do it the entire time. Don't move your head. You're just moving your eyes. Okay. okay. Look straight ahead. Straight ahead. Down into the right. Down to the right. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. Down to the left. Down to the left. Straight. Um, um, count to five. One, one two, two, three, three four, 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 five. five. Um, 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 okay. So now we're going to do the last part of the tapping. We okay. cycle. This is the positive affirmation part. So go back to the hand. Even though, Even though we have this election, have this election. all these people might be stressed out. All these people might be stressed out. I'm just gonna let it go. I'm just let it go. I'm not gonna let. I'm not gonna let all that stress, all that stress, all that trauma affect me. Affect me. Or the joy, or the joy that I have, that I have, and can find, and can find in today, in today, and in this moment. In this moment, I'm not going to. Allow, allow political opinions, political opinions, political differences, political differences to affect. Away. I choose. I choose unconditional love. Unconditional love, and to allow people and to allow people their freedom of choice, their freedom of choice, freedom of expression, their freedom of expression. To respect who they are, respect who they are, and their thoughts, and their thoughts, and what they think. And what they think is best for their life. Best for their life.